Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. News fear coming. Massive crusade of invaders marching to U.S. right now to annihilate America. An unprecedented angry army of crusaders are making their way toward the U.S. right now and are bringing complete chaos and destruction with them. Tay invaders are organized and have a horrific plan to annihilate America. By the sheer size of their massive migrant caravan, they can't be stopped and are prepared to do whatever it takes to take over. A former Secret Service agent is warning everyone, Border Patrol agents are abandoning their posts to protect themselves. The army of invaders are expected to make it here in about a week and are bringing hell with them that must be stopped before they get here. However, most of the mainstream media is strangely silent about this horrendous ordeal which we will all soon be faced with. The group of approximately 1,000 mostly Honduran invaders started their trek to America on March 25 which began in the far southern Mexican town of Tepeshila, the Daily Mail reported. They have already made it 150 miles on foot and are picking up steam as President Donald Trump ripped into Mexico Monday morning for knowing that this army of asylum seekers were coming here and refusing to do anything about it. Trump tweeted that Mexico had absolute power to stop the caravan before they got too far but let them continue marching on toward our border where they plan to riot in Puebla, Mexico when they arrive there between April 5th to 9th. From there, they will force their way into the U.S. by all means possible and will demand asylum and will not quit until they get it. There is an army of invaders approaching, about a week out tops. The first group we saw attack our border patrol agents were part of that bigger group of hundreds of thousands of invaders heading our way. I repeat. Invaders are approaching our borders, about a week out. Concerned citizen, Kyrvin, wrote on Facebook including a picture and video of the invasion coming our way. Despite the massive lack of media coverage, likely because leftist outlets don't see the clear and present danger that this group is. Trump is furious and not taking it lightly. They must stop them at their northern border, which they can do because their border laws work, not allow them to pass through into our country, which has no effect of border laws, Trump announced today on Twitter. We have the power to stop it or fight it even if a citizen militia forms, but without media attention on it and people being warned what to prepare for, the invasion will be here before anything can be done about it. We can't wait until it's too late. The Washington Examiner reported what this caravan is already celebrating as a victory. According to an account from the Center for Immigration Studies, Mexican authorities have allowed the migrants to drive north with relative ease. Researcher Kasha Luna added that the group Weblos and Fronteras, which aids immigrants, bragged about speeding into Mexico. It said, on Monday Weblos and Fronteras posted a video with the caption, the refugee caravan knocking down borders yesterday in Sweden. Immigration agents abandoned the post when they saw us coming. The people celebrate this first small victory. Locals have also provided supplies along the way. Their goal is to cross into the U.S. this weekend and demand asylum. But they have also prepared special security measures should something go wrong, according to Luna. Additionally, the group practiced security protocols including formations which called for the men of the group to form a wall around the women and children. Moreover, the Central Americans made their way to Mexico's Commission for Refugee Assistance and made calls for better compliance with international and national laws, faster processing of asylum applications, and an increase in acceptance rates, she wrote. This is likely a victory for the left as well who want endless amounts of illegals here regardless of the hell they bring on our system that they will inevitably overwhelm. If nothing is done to stop this invasion before it gets here, the fallout from it will most assuredly be blamed on Trump as well, regardless of the fact that he's the only one harping on it now and being ignored. The Daily Mail reports. At its current rate, the caravan could reach the U.S. by early May, or earlier if the immigrants speed up their journey with trains or buses. Reports from the road indicate that Mexican authorities have been abandoning border checkpoints to let the group travel unimpeded and that locals are helping the caravan along the way, 
donating food and water. This has infuriated President Trump, who took to Twitter shortly after 7 a.m. Monday morning to demand action from Mexico and the U.S. government. Mexico has the absolute power not to let these large caravans of people enter their country, he claimed. Assaulting his opposition in the U.S. legislature, Trump also said, Congress must immediately pass border legislation, use nuclear option if necessary, to stop the massive inflow of drugs and people. Border Patrol agents, and ICE, are great, but the weekend laws don't allow them to do their job. Act now Congress, our country is being stolen. Trump went on to call America's border laws pathetic compared to Mexico's in the Twitter rant that invoked a trade agreement between the two countries and Canada that's being renegotiated on his orders. He argued that Mexico is making a fortune on the North American Free Trade Agreement. With all of the money they make from the U.S., hopefully, they will stop people from coming through their country and into ours, at least until Congress changes our immigration laws, he said. Mexico doesn't seem the least bit interested in stopping the army of immigrants this time as they have never done anything to slow the constant flow of border crossers before. These people will become America's problem and no longer Mexico's which is exactly what they are hoping for. Mueller's latest scheme has been exposed. He wants to hide the truth. Robert Mueller's Russia witch hunt findings will likely never see the light of day, much to the chagrin of liberals, who have been waiting for hashtag Mueller time with bated breath. From Washington Times Whatever special counsel Robert Mueller and his team of investigators find out about President Trump, Russia, collusion and dossier gossip may never make it into the public domain. While the tight-lipped Mr. Mueller apparently moves ever closer to a direct confrontation with Mr. Trump, a pointed legal argument has broken out over whether and how the special prosecutor and former FBI director can make his findings known. Options range from a full-on, tell-all report to a bare-bones summary of findings delivered privately to his Justice Department bosses. Precedents from previous special prosecutors have been all over the map on disclosure from the highly detailed report prepared by Ken Starr against Bill Clinton to far more modest disclosures. Which direction the former FBI director takes, legal scholars say, ultimately depends on how he imagines his role as special counsel and his reading of the updated statute regarding the work of special counsels. The question of whether and how the public will learn what Mueller knows is actually complicated, complicated legally complicated historically and complicated as well with respect to another variable, how Mueller imagines his role as special counsel, Kenta Jurisic and Benjamin Wittes, top editors at the legal news blog Lawfare, wrote in a recent analysis of the question. Regulations governing special counsel's mandate that Mr. Mueller submit a confidential report to the Attorney General at the conclusion of his investigation. But there are major ambiguities, starting with what the Mueller team decides to include. With Attorney General Jeff Sessions recused from the investigation, the report would go to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who selected Mr. Mueller. A second major question mark in the law involves what happens next. The statute says Mr. Rosenstein can override the confidentiality restriction if that would be in the public interest to the extent that release would comply with applicable legal restrictions. Mr. Rosenstein then would have to weigh several factors, including the traditionally confidential nature of criminal investigations that don't result in an indictment, the long-standing Department of Justice policy against public revelations, his own distaste for disclosure, and the likely dramatic effect on the government that public release of the report will cause, Ross Garber a specialist in government investigations at the Connecticut law firm of Shipman and Goodwin, wrote recently in the Los Angeles Times. And he will have to weigh all that against the public's interest in knowing about the potential misconduct of the president, Mr. Garber said. In their lawfare analysis, Mr. Wittes, a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, and Ms. Chirisic cited three distinct models to guide the findings of the special prosecutor's 11-month investigation. These models lead to different outcomes in terms of how much the public could be told. 
The first special prosecutor dates back to the Grand Administration and an 1875 scandal involving whiskey revenue, but the modern era is deeply marked by the Watergate special prosecutors, Mr. Starr's Whitewater investigation, and the series of special counsels such as Mr. Mueller appointed to specific probes following the expiration of the Independent Counsel Statute in 1999. Mr. Mueller, the lawfare analysts say, could take one of three routes the orthodox approach, the Watergate precedent and the star model. Broadly speaking, at least in the modern era, they write, these reports have taken two forms, final reports of the investigation and referrals to Congress of material that might be grounds for impeachment. The orthodox approach simply presents the facts and findings through the indictments of targeted individuals or plea agreements prosecutors have struck. There is no overarching narrative or legal summary prepared for public release. Leon Jaworski, the final special prosecutor in the Watergate investigation, took a different tack by delivering 55 pages of bare bones factual information on President Nixon to the House Judiciary Committee, which was considering impeachment proceedings. Mr. Jaworski's packet to the House panel also included what the New York Times described as a briefcase stuffed with 800 pages of documents and 13 tape recordings of Nixon's conversations in the Oval Office. But Mr. Jaworski's report offered no independent legal conclusions and was drafted with the intent of allowing members of Congress to draw their own conclusions in the political matter of impeachment. Nixon resigned before the House of Representatives voted on Mr. Jaworski's findings. Star and Whitewater At the other extreme, Mr. Mueller could follow in the footsteps of Mr. Starr, who spent five years as an independent counsel originally charged with investigating President Clinton's failed real estate deal known as Whitewater. At more than 400 pages long, the Starr report was a comprehensive document that covered not only the failed Whitewater deal which occurred years before Mr. Clinton became president, but also the firing of White House travel agents in a sexual harassment lawsuit filed by former Arkansas State employee Paula Jones. It also delved, in detail, into the extramarital affair between Mr. Clinton and former intern Monica Lewinsky, along with Mr. Clinton's subsequent sworn testimony on the relationship. Some legal scholars say they don't see Mr. Mueller following the star blueprint, in part because revised rules in the wake of the Whitewater affair have transformed the landscape. Harvard Law School professor Jack Goldsmith and Madeline McMahon, a Harvard Law student, in a response posted on the Lawfare site, said the drafters of the new regulations regarding special prosecutors saw the public star report as a problem. It provides an incentive to over-investigate, the two wrote in order to avoid potential public criticism for not having turned over every stone, and creates potential harm to individual privacy interests. Mr. Rosenstein's appointment of Mr. Mueller last May stipulated a much narrower vision of the reporting requirement, raising the possibility that Mr. Mueller's final report may not be public at all and could be handed over to the Office of Attorney General Jeff Sessions for the administration to decide how to proceed. We think that the best reading of the special counsel regulations in their historical context rules out a star-like report to Congress that lays out hundreds of pages of factual allegations as well as legal analysis and conclusions, they write. The drafters of the regulations criticized that approach and took steps to preclude it, and on the whole, the regulations achieved that goal. Bob Bauer, White House counsel to President Obama, jumped into the controversy Thursday over the handling of Mr. Mueller's findings. He said Congress can best protect Mr. Mueller from White House pressure by enacting a law stipulating that the special counsel would have to send a report on the status of his investigation directly to Congress if he is fired.